Hello and welcome to another edition of Steve Moore and Selects. We're here to preview the first of the big days from Caulfield over the Spring Racing Carnival. It's Caulfield Guineas Day and Steve Moran from Best Bets jumps in to join me. What an outstanding program we've got. Well, we keep saying it week in, week out, but it's uh, so very true. Caulfield, the triple group one, uh, triple group one's on the program and I think um, everything's just falling into place, even a little bit of rain Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the track manager, Jason Kerr, would welcome that. Takes all the guesswork out of it surface will be perfect come Saturday and uh, spectacular days racing again. Alright, well let's look at our main event. It is for the three-year-olds of course, uh, running over the mile, the Caulfield Guineas. Uh, bit of interstate rivalry here, Turak Toff, I love this city at the top of the markets. How have you seen it? Well I'm in Turak Toff's corner but uh, I can see there's not a great deal in it. Obviously they both ran in the Golden Rose where Turak Toff was able to win and win in commanding fashion. I love this, I love this city was clearly unlucky on that occasion. I think this Saturday Turak Toff is probably drawn to the greatest advantage. I love the city will have no alternative I think but to go right back. I think Turak Toff can be pretty well posied. I think the other key runner is Anna Cheever, not to be forgotten. Drawn barrier one, doesn't have early speed, might need a bit of luck. Turak Toff's last run of the Prelude was fantastic. Seven of the past ten winners have come through the Caulfield Guineas Prelude and I don't think he can miss each way Turak Toff. I think he's guilt edged. I love this city can win and Achiever can win. Probably the other wildcard runners rekindled interest who keeps charging to the line. Will he charge to the line again and run third, fourth or fifth or will the step to the mile be what he needs in order to win? Uh, time will tell us probably uh, Masquerader might be the best of the roughies just drawn to get the perfect run. Alrighty, that's the first of our group ones. Our second of course is the Yolumba Stakes here. Only a small field. Almost a, uh, a match race in two here between, of course, uh, uh, So You Think and also Hoobie Got You, headed towards the Cox Plate. Who gets the early bragging rights? Well, I think So You Think. Um, he can control the race, whereas Hoobie Got You's a little more one-dimensional, has to be ridden off the speed. All his really good performances, Hoobie Got You are. When he tracks into the race, generally off a relatively slow pace, he seems to have this unique ability to be able to pick up three or four lengths before Michael Rod really calls on him. But I think if Stephen Arnold rolls to the front and controls the tempo of the race on So You Think, he might get Hoover Got You out of his comfort zone a little earlier than uh, than I'm um, sure that Michael Rod would consider desirable. Uh, look, his past four runs, the Cox Plate, the Emirates, his two wins this time in, stamp him as the best horse in the country. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Hoover Got You is probably the best horse in the country at Moody Valley at the moment, but Saturday, I think the honours go to So You Think. You couldn't see an upset beyond the two of them. Hoover Got You will chase hard. Red Ruler might roll to the front. He can run a better race, provided the track's good. Empire's choice back from the injury and forced layoff. And Master O'Reilly and Alco Pop, who you think would probably need minimum mile and a half. I think he'll win again, So You Think. Uh, I think he's the most extraordinary horse we've seen for quite some time. Yeah, it does look like a, an intriguing race despite the small field. Well, a third of our Group 1 features is, of course, the David Jones Turak handicap. Can this boom Sydney mare, Moy Joyous, carry the top weight to victory? I think she can. At first look, you get a little dubious, 58 kilos. No winner with that weight since all shot in 1972. But on further inspection, you look at this race in the last couple of years, the last three years, only four mares have uh, run in this race, and, of course, two have won. The other two that ran, for the record, were Eskimo Queen, who sat six wide all the way, forget about it, and Gallica, who ran a terrific race, beating about a length and a half. Divine Madonna, when she won, coming off a fifth in the Rupert Clark, carried four over the minimum. Moore Joyce has got five over the minimum. Let's not forget the minimum has been raised here in the last couple of years. She comes off seven straight wins, including the Group 1 George Main. I don't think the weight will stop her. Uh, I think we've got three fabulously informed horses here, response of course, and spacecraft are the other two. It is a handicap race. Often something down the bottom will bob up. Uh, I think the one there might be no jurisdiction. Um, but, I, look, I'm, I'm staying with more Joyce. I think you've got to believe what you see sometimes. And I think she'll get out to quite generous odds, you know, sort of easing to the 230, 240 mark as we speak. And I wouldn't be surprised if bookies take her on a little further. But I don't think the weight will stop her. Well, the program's much deeper than those Group 1 races. We get to see, of course, uh, Black Caviar and Star Witness in the Scalacci Stakes. And the Herbert Powell's going to be a, an intriguing race as horses vie for a last-minute uh, ticket into the Caulfield Cup. You're a precedence man. You're all over him in the JRA Cup. Are you, uh, you with him this week? Staying with him. Third up last time in. Of course, he won at 2,000. Did that this time around in the JRA. 
Went to 2400, fourth run back last time in, was commanding again. I think he's become a bit of a machine, this preparation precedence. He's just, you know, willing himself to victory and uh, grinding the opposition into the ground. I think he'll do the same. As you mentioned, uh, precedence, Mudra looking to secure a Caulfield Cup berth. I, I looked at last year, and at this stage, if you were in the top 24 in the order of entry, mm. you got to run. So they're just outside that, of course. Uh, I think with Vigor now considered a doubtful runner, Drunken Sailor's number 24. They're beyond that mark. They need to win here to be guaranteed a run. And it's going to be a cracking Caulfield Cup in nine days' time. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, so there's your best bet. Your best each way you mentioned was a two-rack toff earlier on. What about a roughy? I think there's a couple of roughies in the last. Uh, Rhythm in Paris and Flower Child. And look, it'll be a very open market on that final race. You'll be able to back them both. Rhythm in Paris, if you go back to the Cochrane, beating Response and Lady Lynette, this course and distance, then obviously something amiss at Flemington. Trialled since behind Black Caviar, went OK. If she's on song, she might sweep over the top of them again. And Flower Child's just drawn to get the perfect run here. Best of her form is certainly good enough to win this race, and she'll be a shade of odds. So I think they're the two roughies, both in the same race. Have a little something on both of them. It's the last, so... If you're winning, you can play up, and if you're losing, well, you probably want to back a roughie in any case. Well, there's some advice. Make sure you've got them in your quaddy as you come towards the last. Steve, thanks for that. Look forward to seeing your track side. Terrific. Thanks, Sean. All righty. Well, there's the latest edition of Steve Moore and Sir Selects. We've been previewing, of course, Age Caulfield Guineas Day. You can find all of Steve's selections for that meeting in this week's edition of Best Bet. You'll find it in your nearest news agency. Look forward to seeing you track side too. Cheers.